call. There being no further introductions, it is now time for member statements. The member from York Simcoe. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, today I rise to draw attention to the opposition in my riding of York Simcoe to the Liberals' latest tax plan. Mr. Speaker, young couples often dream of buying a home, a home to build a life in, a home to raise a family in. This is a dream that has been shared by generations. However, the Liberal government is threatening to make this dream even further out of reach. The proposed municipal land transfer tax is simply another tax on home buyers. If introduced, this tax would make Ontario the most expensive place in North America to buy a home, adding about $4,600 to the price. Recent studies show that more than one in four Ontarians agree that this proposed new tax would limit their ability to buy a home. When asked if they opposed the implementation in their area, that number jumped to nine out of every ten. When this tax was introduced in Toronto, in addition to the already existing provincial tax, there was a decline of 16 per cent in the sale of single-family homes. Mr. Speaker, add all the taxes Ontarians pay and then add to that their ever-growing hydro bills and the ill-advised ORPP. Quite simply, our taxpayers are tapped out. This tax is an unfair burden on our young couples and families who are working hard towards Thank you. their goals. Thank you. Member Statements. The member from Kenora, Rainy River. Thank you, Speaker. I have been inundated by pleas for help from desperate Northerners who are struggling to stay afloat. Northerners are telling me things like, quote, I live in Dryden and food prices are terrible. You cannot afford to buy meat unless it is on sale. The writer Joanne goes on to say it was cheaper to buy food in Sault Ste. Marie when she was there on a trip and drive it back to Dryden, frozen in a five-day cooler, than it would be to buy it in her home community. Jamie writes, when I'm visiting my dad in southern Ontario and see how cheap groceries are there in comparison to here, I am in total disbelief. Food prices are getting exorbitant and unaffordable. And these are examples from the urban areas in my riding. Only Ontario's one percenters can afford to buy nutritious food in our remote First Nation communities. Speaker, Northerners are pushed to the brink, and they see the writing on the wall. We know what happens when the cost of living outpaces our wages, pensions, and social assistance rates. It means we can no longer cover essentials like food, housing, and hydro bills. As one Northerner succinctly writes, between the price of food and ever-rising cost of hydro, I think many more of us will become homeless in the next five years. Speaker, this government has a lot of catching up to do to ease the heavy burden on Northerners. We are looking to this provincial government to do the right thing and act now to make life more affordable in Ontario's north. Thank you. Any further member statements? The member from Ontario Centre. Thank you, Speaker. This week, Mr. Speaker, is Holdemore Awareness Week, and I'm standing to pay tribute to the Holdemore. This week, we pay tribute to the 82nd anniversary of the famine genocide known as the Holdemore, when Joseph Stalin closed Ukraine's borders, confiscated all grain to destroy a Ukrainian population that was opposed to his rule, a population that sought the same freedom, the same independence that the people of Ukraine are fighting for today. 17 people per minute. 1,000 per hour and 25,000 per day were dying at the height of the Holodomor, Mr. Speaker. The world was silent and millions died as a result. My grandmother was one of the people who survived the famine, and she used to say that she would hope that the victims of the Holodomor would not only be remembered, but honored. Honored, she said, meant not just remembering or commemorating them, but taking the steps to make sure that a tragedy like this one never happens again. And that is why I'm so proud to stand here today with our Premier and with our Minister of Education because they have worked with the community to do several things that are very important. They've ensured that the Holodomor is in the Ontario curriculum so that every young person can learn about the Holodomor, and they have provided funding uh, to the Holodomor mobile classroom and the Holodomor awareness tour to a bus that has been retrofitted that will travel the province to educate our young people across Ontario about the Holodomor and the lessons of the Holodomor. This week it is important that we not only commemorate Speaker and we remember, but we also redouble our effort and our commitment as a people to learn from tragedies like this one and make sure that tragedies like this, crimes like this, never happen again. And today, by taking these steps, the Premier, the Minister of Education, I think have done what my grandmother and what so many victims in the past have asked for. They have helped to commemorate the victims, they've helped to remember the victims, and they have helped to honour them. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. 
Further members, this the member from Carlton, Mississippi, Mills. Mr. Speaker, I am honoured to rise today to speak about Tamil Remembrance Day. I would like to welcome to the Legislature my friends from the Tamils for Patrick team, the Transnational Government of Tamil Elam, the Uthayan newspaper Ikuruvi, and CMR Tamil Radio. We all remember and mourn people who were killed during the war in Sri Lanka. For the, for the people of Tamil Elam and for Tamils living in Canada and many other parts of the world, the 27th of November is the day on which they remember and mourn over 100,000 people who were killed during the war. None of the perpetrators of this war crime have been brought to justice. The genocidal onslaught for the Tamils in the island of Sri Lanka is still a reality in many parts of the island, and they seek the attention of the greater Canadian community and its support in order to live with dignity and freedom in their own land. On this day, they seek to rededicate themselves to the cause of justice, freedom, and elimination of racism, for those who have died shall not have died in vain. Like all free people in this world, the Tamil population also want the freedom to express their political will through a referendum in accordance with international norms on the island of Sri Lanka and in the Tamil diaspora. To many friends in the Tamil community, some who are here today that have made Ontario their, Ontario their home after experiencing the tragedy of this genocide in Sri Lanka. The Tamil population has contributed significantly to our province and their warm generosity and rich culture is reflected in what makes Ontario great. On behalf of our leader, Patrick Brown and the PC caucus, I say that we stand firmly with you in your quest for peace, freedom and justice in Sri Lanka, as well as the elimination of Thank racism you. everywhere. Thank you. I uh, regretfully inform all of our uh, members that are observing, you're only allowed to observe, uh, and that any demonstration is not allowed. And I would appreciate if the, uh, I would appreciate if the member from Hamilton Mountain would not do any coaching. The member from Timmins Bay. First, first of all, Mr. Speaker, I want to make sure that our guests here understand that uh, New Democrats support uh, what was just said. I'm here today in order to report some good news, Mr. Speaker, from the James Bay Coast and Attawapiskat. As you know, uh, some time ago, last December, there was a diesel spill at the Attawapiskat Hospital, a fairly new facility uh, that was built some 20 years ago. And the fuel handling system that feeds the generators and feeds the heating system, for some reason, this brand new system that's supposed to prevent a spill, spilled and the diesel was contaminated underneath the hospital. As a result, we ended up having to evacuate that hospital. Uh, people had to be sent uh, pretty far away from the community uh, to be able to uh, secure a bed for them. Those that stayed in the community, we had to double up at the health center and other places to offer services. I want to say that uh, the work of the community, working Winnebago Hospital, but also the work of our minister, uh, Minister Hoskin, was key in order to be able to get this thing unstuck. I want to make this point. We had a diesel spill in Attawapiskat at a school. It took over 20 years and the death of a young woman for that school to be re rebuilt by our federal government. And I just want to say that our decision to have transferred health care on the James Bay from the federal government to the provincial government was the right thing to do because in this case, because the Ministry of Health and the province is in the business of delivering health care in this province, we had the capacity to respond to what was a crisis. The minister did his job. The people in the community did their job. Winnebago did their job. And what's best, Mr. Uh, Mr. Speaker, is our hospital is now opening. We still have some issues that we have to deal with, but I think it shows that when the province is involved on First Nations issues on reserve, we can do a heck of a lot better than I think the feds can. And I want to thank all those people, including the minister who was involved. Thank you. Thank you for the member statements. The member from Newmarket, Aurora. 
Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, with the current uh, Syrian refugee crisis uh, gripping the national conscience, uh, communities need to come together to welcome these families with open arms to ensure their basic human rights are met. One organization in my riding of Newmarket Aurora is making a difference. It's the Interfaith Refugee Resettlers. This organization is made up of members from Trinity Anglican Church, Aurora United Church, and the Newmarket Islamic Centre. Together, they're working to sponsor a refugee family. This includes, of course, raising funds for accommodation, food, clothing, and ESL training to help the family transition to life in Canada. Together uh, with uh, Aura, a Canadian charitable uh, uh, organization that is assisting in the sponsorship and resettlement of refugees, the Interfaith Refugee Resettlers have set up their subcommittees, and they're well on their way to raising their $30,000 target. In fact, they're confident they'll be able to raise double that and perhaps bring two families to, uh, to Newmarket Aurora. Uh, it's their hope in mind that the, the residents of Newmarket Aurora and communities across the country come together to support future families that will be starting new lives in Canada. I'm also proud uh, to represent a government that promotes a welcoming and inclusive society by supporting the plan to bring 10,000 Syrian refugees to Ontario. However, uh, without the assistance of community organizations such as uh, Interfaith Refugee Resettlers, this goal is not attainable. As Eleanor Roosevelt once said, where, after all, do universal human rights begin? In small places, close to home. Organizations such as the one in Newmarket Aurora demonstrate how local actions can help make this world a better place. Thank you. member from Niagara West Lambert. Thank you, uh, Speaker. You know, um, it was just over a year ago that I stood here and talked about the, de the death of Art Fleming, one of the uh, most respected uh, and beloved figures in West Niagara. And today, sadly, I want to acknowledge another great man from the community of Beansville in West Niagara, who we lost to cancer on November 15th. And sadly, it's Art's son, Thomas Fleming. And I can't imagine the depth of loss uh, at such a young H, and a vibrant man um, that his wife Joanne has gone through with their children Andrew and Rachel. And my heart particularly goes out to his mom Val, who sadly has buried both her husband and her son within a year. You know, Speaker Tom learned a lot from his dad, both in business and in life. He had strong business smarts. He successfully ran the local family business, Fleming Chicks, and he's at Queen's Park many times. I suspect many of my colleagues here will remember Tom. He was a leader in the poultry sector. He's known for his uh, firm, warm grip, his bright smile. I suspect, Speaker, he voted the right way, but he had tremendous respect for this institution and the work that's done under this roof. He always had a bit of a mischievous twinkle in his eye, too. I remember the first, one of the first times I spent with Tom, who was always a great advisor, to me on agricultural issues. I went to the Fleming's chicks. So newly hatched chicks come out on a conveyor belt and they go round in a circle. And then those working at Fleming's chicks sort out the chicks between male and female chicks. They grow at different rates. So he asked me to take part in this. And there's no pink or blue diapers for the chicks. So I did, to confess, I hope it's parliamentary, what most people would do. I looked between the chicks' legs. Thought that was the biggest route doesn't work so hot for chicks. It's something to do with the wings. I don't know if I still have learned, Speaker. So Tom and his team had a good laugh at that. I suspect it was not the only politician who's been put through that process. But it spoke to his, his spirit, um, speak fondly of his strength in the community. He also was a great singer, always led his choir. So knowing Tom's character, his strong Christian spirit, his great singing voice and the fact that he's not afraid to throw a few elbows from time to time, he's probably leading a choir of angels now, Speaker. Sorry, sure. Great man, sad loss, one of our leading citizens of West Niagara. He'll be missed. Thank you. Thank you. The member status, the member for Springdale. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. In recent weeks, there, have been, there has been an upsurge in racially motivated and unprovoked attacks on the Muslim community. Here in Ontario, a string of suspected hate, hate crimes have taken place in the days following the horrific Paris attacks. A mosque in Peterborough was badly damaged by a fire that appears to have been set deliberately. 
in Kitchener, a Hindu temple's windows were broken by rock-throwing vandals. And in Toronto, a Muslim woman reported that she was attacked while on her way to pick up her children, and that two men who beat her called her a terrorist. These are just a few of the incidents. It is likely that these incidents are misguided retaliations by a few malicious individuals for what happened in Paris, but that does not make it acceptable. Such violence has no place in our society. These hateful incidences are completely conflicting to Canadian values. We are, all inclusive we are an all-inclusive global community. We must accept everyone as equal human beings. The safety of all Ontarians is a collective responsibility of this government, and it is my job as a member of, for Brampton Springdale to raise issues affecting my constituents. I call on our law enforcement agencies to ensure swift action is taken against these per perpetuating violence and ask everyone to remain vig vigilant. Ultimately, whether it happens in Paris, Paris, Baghdad or Peru, or here in Ontario, an attack that causes terror is a terrorist attack. Such cowardly attacks of violence are affiliated with nothing but their own evil. As Ontarians, as Canadians, we must stand in solidarity in condemning terror, which has no place in our world. I stand with all our brothers and sisters of the Muslim community in condemning these acts. Family, friends, colleagues and neighbours have been affected by violence and vandalism. Let us stand as one in providing support to those deeply affected by these horrific attacks. Thank you. Thank you. Member Stevens, the member from Etobicoke Lakeshore. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. In uh, the spirit of the season, I want to bring to the legislature's attention that for the past 25 years, uh, Santa Claus has arrived a little bit early in Etobicoke Lakeshore as our residents celebrate the start of the holiday season with the annual Etobicoke Lakeshore Santa Claus Parade. This is the 25th anniversary of the parade, ranked as one of the four best in Ontario. The parade plays an important role in our community, bringing together local businesses, industry and residents to pull together the best possible event to welcome Santa Claus to our neighbourhood and to the region. There will be 15 amazing floats by, created by volunteers, 10 marching bands, representatives of first responders, athletes and mascots like Carlton from the Maple Leafs and Jason from the Argonauts and over 250 local volunteers costumed as characters, uh, clowns, polar bears, and smurfs. Local organizations like Storefront Humber and Lamp Community Health also uh, get in on the fun. Uh, Mr. Uh, Speaker, this parade is filmed by Rogers Cable. It attracts about 60,000 people out each year. And uh, again, I want to thank uh, the BIAs of Lakeshore Village and Long Branch for getting together uh, to help launch this uh, 25 years ago by just borrowing some trailers and getting a group of uh, local people together to work on it. People like uh, local realtors Carl and Liz Porritt, uh, who donated a great deal of time and uh, spirit to have this done. Uh, I have the honour of uh, having helped the organizers to secure their very own Santa's workshop over the years where they can work and store the floats throughout the year. And my six-year-old daughter can't wait to join me at the Etobicoke Lakeshore Santa Claus Parade on December 5th and uh, greet Santa to Etobicoke Lakeshore. Thank you. The only thing that saved you was invoking Santa Claus, so I just thought going over time. Um, I do want to remind all members of their word count. Uh, it, it's time-consuming, and it's, although it's friendly, we. Uh, we try to stay within the time frames. Thank all members for their uh, statements.